and I'm going to chat a little bit just about assistive technology. Um, basically, I used to be an AT officer in higher education and uh, have been working happily in AHEAD now for two years, so virtually at the beginning of the pandemic. And in AHEAD, um, so we do kind of advocating about accessibility, so Gavin's presentation was warmly welcomed, and I love what he had to say. As well as that, we advocate as well about assistive technology. So our mission is to really promote inclusion in further and higher education. And what we're finding in the last few years is that assistive technology, our awareness about it has increased because of systems like Google and Office 365 that institutions have. So it's becoming more of more choice around assistive technology and what it can do to support inclusion. But uh, there's just a few things that have arisen out of this new arising interest uh, in assistive technology across uh, campuses. So if you're new to assistive technology, what it does is that it helps students in lots of different ways. So if students have difficulty speaking, typing, writing, remembering, um, or for lots of different reasons, there, there are assistive technology tools or implements are applications that can help them with all these um, issues. And AT has been around for decades, uh, you know, in education, and especially with rising numbers and disabilities, both in HE and further education, we're seeing much more take up, especially during COVID. As one survey uh, that we did actually only just last year, um, noticed a kind of a doubling of the uh, uptake of assistive technology since the first year of, of the pandemic. So assistive technology has definitely found more of a grip um, within the education side since the pandemic as well, because of students working remotely or hybrid, and it's because it supports basically independent learning and inclusion. So uh, again, just to clarify what AT is. So it can be basically a tool that essentially it can it creates not only inclusion, but fairness as well, because it allows everyone to participate equally within education. So for example, like I wear eyeglasses so I can see more effectively. So even my glasses are considered a form of assistive technology because you know without them, everything is just a blur to me. So with them, this levels the playing field. So I'm on a level playing field as those who don't have sighted issues. And essentially that's really the, the ethos then behind assistive technology in itself. So within assistive technology, because I love it, uh, I love telling students about, you know, how tools have been used to help us navigate uh, for, for centuries. And assistive technology now is really a tool to help you navigate the educational landscape that they're going to be entering. So within this, all these tools that they're going to be using uh, to navigate them through this educational landscape are going to be like their smartphones that they have available, their tablet devices, those desktops and laptops as well, as well as maybe other devices that they may have or may obtain from the likes of disability services like dictaphones and that which are very popular. So unfortunately, a lot of students when they enter um, further higher education aren't aware of the AT like possibilities within all their own devices, never mind specialized software as well. So we've noticed this can be a bit of a challenge. So we've tried to even address that in a head by creating a specific resource. And this resource is trying to like house not only specialized AT, but um, basically what are considered mainstream AT. So AT that we find in Microsoft and Google that do like, like what Gavin did about live captions, like even that's considered assistive technology because you know for people who are deaf or hard of hearing then they could see close captions of Gavin's um, dialogue as he was speaking so it, again it promotes inclusion um, so where else it can happen as well as spelling grammar and I think Gavin mentioned that and say what's particularly getting traction in Office 365 is immersive reader and that's a reading tool that's really easy to use and reads out word documents your emails powerpoints to you and it's really powerful because like we do see like a large amount of number of students with dyslexia within both further and higher education um, and not only is does it support students with dyslexia immersive reader and this read aloud function but also it supports um, students who have English as a second language maybe even like students who might have just mental health issues or other kind of um, issues that might pose a barrier for them to feel included uh, within the education system so 
because there are all these choices of, of Microsoft, Google tools, um, as well as specialized tools that you know colleges or ed further education centers purchase for the sake of students, you know, to again promote inclusion, that this topic or this um, range of assistive technology is becoming quite wide. So sometimes for staff, it can seem quite daunting about where to begin or to explore. And even for students themselves, because assistive technology can be found within their devices, within the likes of Google or Office 365, and because they're specialized assistive technologies as well, that the beginning of this AT journey can seem quite big and large. So what we've done is that in a head, we've tried to create a resource that's interactive and that poses three questions. And upon answering those three questions, it will create a list of 80 starting points for you. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rely, please, can someone tell me, can they see my website appearing there in the screen? Yeah, we can. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So what we've called it, and we just launched it, I think it was um, September, October, uh, when we launched it, it's called Discover Your AT, and it sits in the AHEAD website. So I can post a link to it as well within the chat, and that's no problem. So within uh, Discover Your AT, we've tried to um, make it as easy to use as possible. And what we did was we interacted with both staff and students from further and higher education and got feedback. And I think feedback after over 12 or three months. And I think overall, we had something like 25 people on a one-to-one -one basis giving us feedback on it. Um, so the first thing that they see when they go to Discover Your AT is a video about how to use it with captions as well. Um, so they enter the resource here. So uh, there's a number of things in the first question, which, and the first question simply is, what interests would you like to explore today? So for, I'd say a lot of students, maybe reading could be a bit of a challenge for many reasons. So I, you can click as many as you want. Um, but for this, I'm just going to click reading, but other things we have included are magnification, revision, writing, note-taking, spelling, and we really try to think of those main categories of assistive technology that really connect with that learning experience. And we've tried to categorize in the back end all these different tools to integrate with the students' needs. So when I've selected, in my case, just one, uh, I click on next question. This takes me to question two, where I simply choose the device I either own or have access to. So for me, uh, it's a Windows computer, Android tablet, Android phone. But for students, they may, may have Apple laptops or computers are popular with some students, depending on the disciplines as well, that they choose um, different types of laptops like Chromebook as well we've included. And for students who sometimes maybe are unsure of the device that they own, we've tried to cater for that as well where the browser can detect the device that they're using as well. Um, that's perfectly fine. So I will click on to my last question, where it's simply about asking me what uh, types of digital ecosystems I have access to. So if it's Microsoft or Google. So in my case, I have access to both, but Microsoft is the one I use primarily. So now I simply click on show my results. And it uh, has quite a bit of information. So I'll just scroll down through it. And it has two apps or two tools that immediately is bringing to my attention that exist within the Office 365. And with, beside each tool, there's like a little synopsis about what the tool is, a link uh, to our website in a head where we have one web page dedicated to each of the tools that we mentioned. And then also just a little reminder of those options that informed this uh, to appear. And then to further support the student or whoever uses this, and they can then email themselves this link. So there's a unique link created for every single search. So I can email this to myself really easily. And then, um, if I wish, I may not have time today uh, to explore the, uh, the, the list of tools that are supplied, but I may have time later, or it may be something I want to revisit a number of times. And again, that link is relevant to my search, so no one else would have that link. And then I can see up here that I can narrow down the search if I want uh, by 
unclicking things. So sometimes there can be a large list of things. So try to cater for people who you know might might find like too much information daunting. So they can simplify it as such, and then that would simplify. The, the list below. So again, immersive reader, like I mentioned earlier, is really, really uh, getting a lot of traction uh, because it's so good at reading out. And in terms of its readability, it colors uh, the background text, it increases the text size as well. So to promote and support that student or whoever um, learning about immersive reader, that dedicated web page has information just pertaining to the core aspects of that tool. We've tried to really simplify uh, with a few images how to use it, even like adding a video. And in this case, we had a really great webinar and a, a lovely person um, actually presented on Immersive Reader for us. And she, and she allowed us to use this great video here. Um, and then if people wish, and if there's an assistive technology that you think isn't on a resource and that would find a place, we are kind of welcoming um, uh, like basically submissions as well to our website as well. So we've had a number um, from a few people as well and we credit people as well. So um, all you just do is just read what's involved. And then should you wish, you can download the template. So it's a really simple template and some people have filled it in and actually um, one person was really good and actually um, uh, gave us three uh, apps for kind of uh, mental health issues. So coping with anxiety in particular which um, wasn't the original intention of the site, but when we saw the need for it, we definitely saw it found a place within the site. So uh, yeah, so it's been great to kind of like have a community of people who are basically informing and raising awareness of AT as well. And like that, we think it has a place for all kinds of staff as well. So even like, as well as academic staff might be interested, but non-academic staff as well, um, even for parents or primary or secondary school teachers, uh, we've uh, found that you know it's got a bit of traction as well, even in teacher training colleges. And um, we found in Mary I as well, uh, there's interest in it as well. So we're just you know again, there's that appetite um, for more awareness about assistive, te assistive technology, and people are you know just kind of more open to it. I think as well because of the pandemic as well. In a way. Um, but that is me done. So I'll try to keep That's it short and simple. Uh, so I think I'm well in time, am I? Uh, one minute over one minute oh my god oh. dear god okay it's almost like i planned it that way which i definitely didn't um, it's okay. okay it won't be off at your head we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> <let> you... <laughs> okay, thanks very much. okay so, so anyone has any questions feel free um but if anyone uh has wants to contact me over it um or has other ideas about what we can do with it um, that's fine. Like I said, we've had 25 people, that's including staff from further higher education and students from both further and higher, higher education, looking at it, giving us feedback because the language, the look of it, um, the simplifying of it, it was a lot more complicated when I initially started, but it was very easy to tell um, from talking to people that there would seem to be lots of confusion even around like what is Office 365 or what is Google even and what are those Google tools. So. What I thought was going to be really simple turned out to be kind of like even a minefield with things, because even like Office 365 posed loads of questions, even with the icons, yeah. even the icons for the tools, there was loads of discussion about those. So it was great to get that level of feedback. It's lovely to have. It's actually something that nearly could be slotted into an induction as well. Um, if anybody has induction courses that they do, yeah. just to point people towards, because you point them towards the access office or the AT service sometimes, but sometimes they don't want to. So this can give them a little bit of space to figure things out themselves as well without necessarily having to make that bridge as well. Oh yeah, and actually, and that's a really good point because one of the things that we try to encourage people to do is even like when, when academics even create an assignment, if they just put a link to the resource at the bottom mm. of the assignment that it just hopefully will encourage students to just see what kind of maybe need that they have. So in terms of the academic process, do they find reading the biggest challenge or understanding the biggest challenge um, or even just, you know, using like, you know, online post-its or, you know, time management can be an issue as well. So because of the nature of students, because of disabilities, as well as English as a second language and that, that AT is finding more and more of a place um, in, the, in the widespread student population as well. 
Absolutely. So, Gavin just mentioned there it might be a good thing to make it a plugin for an LMS. So it can oh, be uh, okay. maybe on the side of a course or embedded in a course or something like that. Yeah. Gavin's going to add to chat about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm well, we're up for anything because literally, I, I mean, because there's so much good work now going on digital strategies, like even the FE sector have put together a really amazing 10 year digital strategy plan um, for students, which will be incredible. And we're seeing higher education, so much is going on, but maybe this just has like a, just a, a tiny voice in education, just about somehow helping students um, to to get more AT aware. Of it. so yeah, really I think it's, it's a here at the right time, if you know what I mean, it's arrived at the right time when people are paying attention to accessibility. Yeah, which is so really much of it. And so much is just widespread. It's just there in, on their laptop, on their phone, on the device. Um, yeah. Like even like Edge browser has so much support in it. Like there's incredible things. So Gavin, no Gavin, thanks a lot. And I will, I will be in touch with you after this because, yeah, my, my dream to own a yacht just seems a little bit closer now. <laughs> Getting closer, <laughs> indeed. That's brilliant, Trevor. Thanks, Amelia.